Right, hello and welcome to chapter 12 of the UVM Primer code videos. Uh, my name is Ray Salemi and I'm the author of the UVM Primer. In chapter 12 we talk about UVM components which are the basic building blocks of a UVM test bench. And all UVM components, because they extend the uh, basic UVM component class, uh, have similar features. Here we're looking at random tests, uh, which extends UVM tests. Now, it turns out UVM test extends UVM component. So, where the random test is really another kind of component. Uh, that's why it uses the UVM components you tell. And UVM components can be put into the factory and created using the factory. Uh, notice that this random test class is a lot simpler than the random test class from our previous example. Uh, the previous random test did a lot of work. It, it uh, grabbed the BFM from the uh, from the top level. It stuffed the BFM into these uh, lower level components of the test bench. Uh, and it did a run phase that launched all of those guys in their own threads. None of that. We don't have any of that here because the UVM actually does all this for us. Uh, the key is these phases. UVM components have methods uh, defined in them that you can override called phases. There's um, there's many phases. Uh, some of the common ones are the build phase, the connect phase, and the run phase. Uh, there's also an end of elaboration phase that runs right before the run phase, and we'll see that in later videos. The build phase here is building three components, the random, the tester H, the coverage H, and the scoreboard H. And what you do when you build a component, you can see UVM components all have this constructor. They expect to receive their name and a pointer to their parent. And in this case, we see that we have tester H, um, and it should have, this is a little bug here, it's not really a bug, it's um, just a style problem. This really should say tester H like this, and this should say scoreboard H like that. And I'm leaving the error in here so that when you look at it in the book, you won't be confused. There's no significance to what goes into that string. Just by convention, we call them the same thing. And you notice we pass this name and the parent. And that allows us to create a hierarchy, uh, a UVM hierarchy, where everybody knows who their parent is in the hierarchy. And that becomes useful when we want to control things like reporting and whatnot. So here's our, um, our top-level UVM component. And all it does, this test, is create these lower-level components. So the UVM creates this object, calls build phase. Build phase creates these lower level component objects and then the UVM calls build phase on those. So let's go look at random tester for example. <clears throat> random tester is a extends UVM component. So this is a classic UVM component. Uh, and random tester contains two phase methods. One is the build phase method which just got called above. Build phase you can see all it does is it pulls down that BFM from the config. So we don't do that in our constructor anymore. We do that in the build phase, which is really a better place to do it. Um, and then also there's this run phase, which we talked about in the previous example. The run phase, uh, and like all phases, receives the phase object as, a, uh, as, as a, an argument. It raises an objection using that object so that we know that this guy wants to keep the test bench running. Uh, you'll notice that when we look at the scoreboard and the coverage, objects, they don't raise objections because they're not driving stimulus, they're just watching. He drives his stimulus here, thousand loops through using get data and uh, get op, and then the send op in the BFM, uh, he waits a bit for it to all finish and then he drops his objection. And that's our, uh, that's our random tester. Uh, if we look we can also see our, our coverage object. The coverage object has all that cover group stuff that we had before. It has a run phase that we've seen this type of run phase before. We've seen this several times now, but notice there's no uh, there's no objections here. And then there's the build phase where we're um, actually pulling out the uh, pulling out the BFM that gets used down here. Uh, finally, there's also the scoreboard object. The scoreboard class also extends UVM component. Also gets registered with the factory also has a build phase that pulls uh, conf the, conf the BFM out of the config DB and it has a run phase. All of these run phases are being run in their own threads so there's no need to launch things uh, in their um, 
to launch things in the fork join anymore. Now, because we are using object-oriented programming, and because the uh, random test and the add test are so similar, um, we can now look at a nicer add test, which is right here. So here we see the add test extends the random test, and it leverages everything from the random test. It gets its build phase, it gets, there is no run phase, it gets its build phase, it doesn't get a constructor, that's the only thing. All it does is it overrides the tester h variable to be an add tester so that when build phase gets called, we create an add tester uh, instead of creating a random tester. And so this has kind of given us an overview of UVM components, um, how you make them and how they can fit together to create a hierarchy and a test bench. Um, in our next chapter, we're going to look at environments which give us a way of building the structure.